when this meeting is being recorded and broadcasted. Uh, as we all know, there's been a horrible tragedy here in Arlington earlier today, and our thoughts are with the families of everyone involved, and I'd invite us all to have a moment of silence in, in memory and uh, support of the affected families. Thank you all. Uh, Town Manager Chaplain suggested I think it was a really good idea to have he and Chief Ryan update us on the recent events of today. So Chief, if you want to come up, Adam, if you have anything you want to bring up. No, yeah, si simply that I, I thought it would be a good idea for Chief Ryan to be here to address the board and as well as the community watching in regards to today's events. Thank you. Chief. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, honorable members of the board. I wish I were here under better circumstances, but as you know, we had a, a, a tragic crime on Newland Road today. And um, I guess uh, a couple of uh, important points uh, to make. One, um, the manager and his management style and, and supportive approach to me and Chief Jefferson during an event like that is very important to us. And, and he, uh, he clearly demonstrated his leadership abilities and let us do our jobs, yet kept us in, uh, in the communication loop. And I, I, I appreciate um, that style of management. Uh, and secondly, and, and probably more importantly uh, for the community, you know, uh, we understand that the community is, is seeking information right now, and that's it's, um, it's, it's what we expect. We only ask that the community um, be patient with us, allow us to process that very difficult crime scene, and when the time is appropriate and it's responsible to do so, uh, we will release more information. Um, but it's in, very important for the community to understand that, that there's no reason for anybody to be in fear for their safety. This was an isolated incident, and we are not on a manhunt um, for anybody. We feel that the person responsible um, uh, is deceased. And with that, um, again, I just ask for the community's patience. We'll continue to uh, communicate when it's appro appropriate to do so. And uh, within reason, I'd be happy to take any questions if you have any. And thank, thank you again for your support. Thank you, Chief. Questions from anyone? I think uh, I'll ask a question that uh, we were asking you in back, which is, um, how are you and how is the force? Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I'm fine. Uh, our, our officers, uh, uh, as well as the firefighters that were on the scene, will go through a critical incident stress debriefing. Uh, Chief Jefferson's working on scheduling that. I think there's one going on right now. And uh, we'll ensure their health and safety uh, and, and wellness moving forward. The manager uh, asked that very same question earlier as well. So, okay. Anything further? Thank you to you, Mr. Chairman. Um, does Newland Road have to be closed for a while, or is uh, it open uh, to traffic? Or? Mr. Greeley, it is closed right now for a media staging area. Um, as the media uh, breaks down their camera crews, we will be taking up just one lane of it. Um, we try to accommodate their needs as well. Uh, they may be running live from the scene at 10 and 11. Um, I don't expect the road to be closed any uh, past 11 o'clock this evening. And we are working with uh, residents to make sure they can get to their driveways and, and escorting them in and out. It, it, it certainly is a terrible tragedy, but as always, we're very proud of the way, Adam, you and your force handled these type situations, Fred. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. That means a lot. Anyone else? Thank you very much, Thank Chief. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good night. Thank, Thank you, Chief. All right. I, I am going to pull out of order uh, number five, the request one space for residential handicap parking with uh, Namun Safranek, if I got that name correct. Welcome. Um, can I, in, uh, Marion, do you perhaps, do you want to come to the microphone or should we bring the microphone to you? All right. So I read the report of, uh, so I don't know if you've got a copy of the reports from uh, the police uh, who were in the, uh, in the fire who were reviewed, and it looks like what you're looking for is overnight parking on the street, right? Yes. Okay. So the handicapped space itself doesn't give you overnight parking permission. But what we, what I, I would, I think the board should consider is looking at granting you a, um, an overnight parking permit, which is different from a handicapped space. Yeah, I know, we don't know, you know, my yep. husband, he's Air Force, and we moved here August 5th, and this is my second ticket I'm getting in. Mm -hmm. And uh, how our house 
his uh, crotch is located so going down. And his, uh, our van is a modification done, so it's lower the ground. No, uh, impossible to parking in the garage. So only we have choices uh, on the street, but I'm keep getting the ticket. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, somebody come to see it, you know what I'm talking about it, you know, and the, with my son, you know, no, we have a hard time finding the house for the, his situation. Finally, we found that we just happy with what we have. Then I'm getting the ticket. I was like, oh, first, we don't know what is this for, you know, because uh, we moved here. We didn't know we cannot parking on the street. Mm -hmm. Not overnight. Yeah. Yes. And uh, certain time to certain time you stop, you cannot do that. So it's, I'm just the one of, I don't need a handicap parking and I just don't want this ticket keep coming to me. Yeah. That is what I'm asking for. If we do overnight parking, I think that would stop the tickets. Mr. Kira, I saw you up first. Yeah, so to, the, to that uh, point, now we did get the reports back from uh, fire and police and they said they would object to a handicap parking spot, but they, they, they made clear that they have no objections to an overnight parking spot. Is it? Um, in order to approve an overnight parking spot yes. contingent upon a, a um, application, you know, proper application I've, of such? Uh, uh, just to, as in filling out the paper and doing, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that's completely in order. I'd like to make that motion. Second. Any questions or comments? No. Okay. So what we have on the table that we're about to approve is we're going to grant you not a handicap permit, but an overnight permit. So you need to talk to Marianne or somebody else in the selectman's office about how to get that permit. Okay. And once you get that permit, that uh, will resolve the situation. You still are going to have difficulty when there's snow emergencies because you, it's, it, you, the plows still need to plow even when uh, you have an overnight. But uh, other than that, the tickets will stop. Okay. Thank you. All right. And you know, like a snow, we had, don't have experience with the snow yet. <coughs> and uh, my husband going to be here only 10 months. Yeah. Here, you know, May. And after he done school, we're going to move. And I, I, would, I would definitely invite you to talk to the selectman's office. They're very helpful. They'll explain to you how it'll work and how you can know about it. Tomorrow? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Much. We have a motion from Mr. Kuro, seconded by, by Mr. Byrne. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Thank you. All right, we're going to now return to the order. Um, we only have one item on the consent agenda, which is the minutes of the meeting for November 4th. Move approval. Second. Right. I'm going to abstain because I wasn't here. I actually was on vacation. <laughs> um, any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And I abstain. 401. Uh, next up, introduction of our new town council. Mr. Town Manager. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so as the board knows, uh, we were successful in recruiting, uh, finding and recruiting a new town council, uh, Attorney Douglas Heim. Uh, I know I've told the board about him at a previous meeting and provided uh, some details on his background to the board. Uh, but today and tonight, uh, some folks in town had the opportunity to meet Doug. He spent the afternoon in the legal office with Attorney Marlanga and the legal staff, uh, and also some time this afternoon with the Board of Selectmen staff, uh, beginning his acclimation uh, to the role into the town of Arlington. Uh, and he's also here tonight to meet the board. Uh, so with that, I'd like to introduce Doug Heim, um, let him t tell you a little bit about himself, and then obviously give the board an opportunity to ask some questions. Welcome. Thank you very much. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and uh, Board of Selectmen. Um, I'm extremely enthused to serve uh, this board and the town of Arlington as its town council. I've spent my career in municipal government um, advising other municipalities and representing them in litigations. And um, I think it will be a particularly um, exciting uh, thing to both uh, serve Arlington as an advisor and to represent it in uh, its efforts to meet its challenges and goals. Be happy to answer any questions that you have, but I know that you've got a busy agenda tonight, as always, and I don't want to take any more time of yours than is necessary. We can be honest. The busiest thing on our agenda is the Patriots game. <laughs> 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 Mr. Greeley. Uh, to that end, um, welcome. And you did spend time in New York. You are not a Yankees fan, are you, sir? I think that I should probably plead the fifth on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> oh, I can only say my that God. You're going to have to file a motion <laughs> to compel. <laughs> Is this, a, does, is this the season final? <laughs> I can only say that uh, it perhaps might be worse to be the type of person who would switch allegiances only to get a job. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, uh, I greatly admire, sir, that uh, part of why you're not starting until mid-December is because you're in the middle of something, and that's a great work ethic and uh, loyalty, and we certainly look forward to you bringing that here. How many candidates were there originally? Uh, I, I want to say we had over 50. 50. We pick the best. Good, good luck. Look forward Thank you to very much. Thank you. And changing that opinion on the end. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Diane. Welcome. Um, I was very anxiously phoning the town manager probably every 16 hours the, the last two weeks. So I'm very excited that you're here. And we have a town council. Um, Attorney Malinga is also an excellent council, long time council here in Arlington. And I know you'll work well together. Um, He'll be a great mentor, but you also bring a lot to the table. I have a question. Um, I understand you worked for the Office of the Legal Counsel for Boston Public Schools. Did you in that capacity ever have the opportunity to attend any of the Boston Public School Committee meetings, particularly around a heated or community heightened issue? Um, if you could speak to that. Yes, Vice Chairman Hon. I, uh, the Legal advisor to the Boston Public Schools attends every Boston Public School Committee meeting. Um, when the current legal advisor, Ms. Cussie, was not available, I often um, attended the meetings in her stead. Um, the meetings can get quite charged on a routine basis about just about anything, as you might imagine. Um, in a school district of some 56,000 students, it's, uh, there are a lot of issues that are ripe for discussion. I also um, represented the Boston Public Schools on some sensitive matters, um, not the least of which is their um, efforts to revise their student assignment process, which goes back to some complicated and charged uh, legal decisions from the 70s and continues to be an issue of contention for the Boston Public Schools. So I've worked both with the school committee um, as well as um, some boards that have been appointed by Mayor Menino uh, to investigate their options on that score. And I've had more than a few opportunities to see um, the importance of having good counsel at uh, these types of occasions, both uh, in terms of uh, rules of order, but also in answering questions that uh, representatives may have. Excellent. That's going to be a good experience for a town meeting where you'll have 252 people <laughs> and about 10% of them are going to try to get you to go down that road. They want to debate. Um, so I'm glad you had that experience. My second question, if I may, um, revolves around, I'm not sure if you had any interface with one of our former employees, John Dunlap, who's Mayor Menino's Meets one of his main people for la labor negotiations. He's left. Sorry. Oh, did he leave? Uh, yeah, Sorry. Mr. Dunlap. Just my understanding is that he just left. Um, uh, the corporation counsel, Mr. Sinnott, as well as Henry Lutine, who some of you may know, um, have both uh, recommended that I get in touch with Mr. Dunlap, no matter what. Um, I wanted to afford uh, Mr. Dunlap a little. Uh, room to not feel like he was in a difficult position while there are other candidates uh, seeking the job, but I will be absolutely certain to touch base with Mr. Dunlap and converse with him about Arlington, and um, I'm eager to learn as much as possible from as many sources as possible. And, and the reason I asked that, and this was really important for the board with the town manager when we went through that process interviewing candidates is um, what experience you have and what you bring to the table in terms of contract negotiations, where we do have labor unions, we do have management. Um, and we need to respect that. And one of the attributes, qualities that Adam said he would bring, Mr. Chaplain said he would bring, and he's done, and then some, he has been very successful with um, changing sort of the tenor, putting Mr. Chaplain's style when negotiations occur. Um, and so I was just wondering, the reason I said that was I wasn't sure if you, have you worked on any labor negotiations? Just briefly, and then I won't ask another sure. question. Sure. Uh, no, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions that I'll the call you board in, has. In a, a week after you start and ask week, you to tell yeah, That's more. right. Yeah, we can talk as, as much and as anyone would like. a lot after that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've worked uh, closely with uh, uh, Boston Public Schools Labor Councils on a number of matters. Um, their negotiations are not necessarily what I would imagine that everyone would want for Arlington's uh, labor unions because uh, there have been some heated negotiations over the past couple of years. Um, however, um, I've also negotiated a number of important matters on behalf of the school district and spent, as I'm sure Ed has as well, a career so far in negotiating um, individual cases, which I think 
is helpful, but I recognize that in a different context, it's important to have a different tenor, um, to be as cooperative as you can be, uh, as civil in representing the interests of the town and recognizing the importance of our uh, local unions. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Joe? Well, I just wanted to just join and, and, and welcome you aboard. Um, it's, it's actually kind of um, uh, interesting timing tonight because you, you come and introduce yourself this, the night that we are opening the warrant for town meeting um, and we, we begin that, that uh, annual uh, slog. So I'm glad you'll be coming aboard next month um, because I think traditionally um, town meeting has been kind of the coming out party for uh, the new town councils and uh, trial by fire or what, what have you. Um, the, uh, we have with such a large legislative body and so many active uh, citizens in, in the town, many boards and committees, I think you, you, you will find this an interesting um, experience and I hope you'll find it a rewarding experience uh, too. And we really look forward to working with you. So, Thank you, Mr. Selectman. I'm particularly looking forward to town meeting, which sounds like an extremely exciting and energetic enterprise. <laughs> well Somebody put. write down wow. what you just said. What, what wow. <laughs> um, no, just thank you for um, you know, being here tonight, and we look forward to working with you. I'd just like to say thank you to um, um, all of the uh, folks who interviewed me and for your consideration. It was an extremely thorough process. I felt like I learned a tremendous amount about Arlington, its personnel. It was uh, extremely well run. Even if I hadn't been selected, I think I had told the town manager and uh, Ms. Cove Malloy that um, the process was uh, so thorough and um, so candid in terms of representing the importance of all of the different roles of town council that I felt very much like I'd gotten to know this town and its challenges and its goals very well and was as excited as, as I could be when I found out that I was going to be selected to serve this town. Thank you all very much. I Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Okay. Next up, we have a request for a Class 2 license. Uh, location moved from Summer Street for uh, Thomas P. McDermott-Tro, uh, uh, McDermott uh, auto sales uh, moving to rear Dudley Street. Move approval. Traffic to conditions are set forth. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Next up, Citizens Open Forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted there's a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Is there anyone here who's uh, here to want to speak for Citizens Open Forum? Not seeing anybody. Traffic rules and orders. We took care of number five. Number six, presentation, Vision 2020 final report on the 2013 town survey. Mary Harrison. Welcome. Thank you. I'd like to say that my co-chair, Brucey Moulton, is here. And um, the report I'm going to be reading to you is a collaboration um, from both of us. Vision 2020's 2013 town survey looked at residents' participation in town government and other town events. It looked at the communication sources residents use to learn about town events and issues, and volunteer activity, and awareness of and support for the nine town goals. We see these areas as of particular concern to the town, especially with regard to participation of residents who have lived in town for less than five years. Of Arlington's approximately 18,500 households, 24% completed the survey. That's 4,458 households returning a survey, and this is the second year in a row we've had almost a quarter of the households responding. 59% of the respondents had lived in town for 15 years or less. 72% own their own dwelling, 28% rent, and 30% indicated that they have children under 18 in their households. Turning now to resident participation in town, the survey asked 
whether and how residents participate in town government related activities. Participation in precincts was measured by whether respondents know their town meeting members and whether they have talked with their town meeting member about a town event or issue. 66% do not know their town meeting members. Over 75% have not talked with their town meeting members. The proportion of respondents knowing or talking with their town meeting member is related to their length of residence in town and to the precinct they live in. Those living in town for more than 15 years are more likely to know or talk with their town meeting member. Those living here less than five years were least likely to know or talk with their town meeting member. Respondents from some precincts were more likely to know or talk with their town meeting member. We asked whether and how residents participate in town government related events such as town meeting, school committee, committee meetings, public forums, and candidates night. The survey provided a menu of these events and asked respondents to check all events they attended and all they viewed on Acme Cable TV. Now here's an interesting contrast. 71% of respondents said they attended town events such as Town Day, EcoFest, Feast of the East, school performances, and sports. However, only about 25% said they attended or viewed town government related events. Three fourths, that's 3,303 out of our respondents, did not include, indicate attendance at any town government related event. We feel this is important for you to know. For the thousand or so respondents, who did attend or view events, the most attended events were town meeting, followed by public hearing, public forum, and school committee meeting. The most viewed events were the board of selectmen meetings, town meeting, school committee meetings, and candidates night. As another indicator of participation in town, we wanted to know whether residents were aware that Arlington has town goals and whether they support the goals which were set over 20 years ago. 65% of our respondents answered the question, are you aware the town has goals? Of these, 28% said yes which means 72% were not aware the town has goals. Of those aware of the goals, the respondents who have lived in town for five to 25 years are more likely to be aware that the town has goals. Those who've lived in town for less than five years are the least likely to know. Regardless of their familiarity with the goals, respondents showed support for all of the nine goals. The survey data suggests that there are a number of steps the town could take to increase resident participation. For example, town meetings members might hold neighborhood meetings to discuss and clarify town matters of concern in the neighborhoods. They might increase outreach to new residents in their area, perhaps introducing them to the town governance structure and ways that residents can participate in town governance, in their precincts, and in volunteer organizations. The town might increase awareness of goals, for example, by displaying them in an easily found place on the town website. This might be a positive factor 
for economic development initiatives seeking to attract new businesses. Town goals convey a sense of focus for the town's decision making and for engagement of businesses and residents in town volunteer activities. And now our focus on volunteering. Arlington prides itself on volunteers. And indeed, volunteers supplement and often take the lead in providing important services that benefit the town. However, much has changed in the world of volunteering. Because of work and family demands, people are less available to volunteer. And when they do commit to a volunteer role with a particular group, they want to feel that they will be able to make a difference. If they don't feel they can make a difference with a particular group, they'll find another one to work with. New communications and data management technologies for organizing and managing volunteers have changed the way people expect to learn about and organize uh, volunteering. So our 2013 survey asked, what motivates people to volunteer? What deters them? And what kinds of time commitments do they prefer? Our data showed that about a third of respondents volunteer in Arlington and 44% volunteer outside of the Arlington. A couple people wrote in that they felt other communities need their help more than Arlington does. Primary motivators for volunteering are commitment to a cause, giving back to the community, and being able to use one's skills and knowledge. The primary deterrent to volunteering was too busy, no time. That was 50% of all the reasons why people didn't volunteer. And this was followed by caring for a family member and a need for transportation. We particularly noted that write-in comments showed a number of respondents were not aware of volunteer opportunities in town or said that they weren't asked to help. Short-term commitments were strongly preferred by respondents. One day or a few days uh, were their preferences. And their preferred meeting times were weekends and weekday evenings. To encourage volunteer participation in town groups, including boards and commissions, we suggest it is vital that groups seeking volunteers regularly publicize their volunteer opportunities using many different communication channels. And then they should follow up personally with people who indicate an interest. Groups may want to break their long-term and even some shorter-term uh, projects into smaller tasks so time commitments can be shortened while still advancing the project. Groups might use new website technologies that make coordination of volunteers more efficient. These sites allow volunteers to sign up for specific tasks and time commitments, and the sites automatically remind vol volunteer signups of their commitment, the place where they're supposed to be. Volunteer groups should evaluate themselves rigorously asking questions like, are they welcoming to new members and new ideas? Are their meetings well run and activities well organized? Will new members feel they can make a difference? What mechanics are in place to invite and act on feedback? Groups should ask themselves also, what age group is a volunteer organization attracting? If it is heavily skewed in one direction or another, what steps can be taken to broaden the group's appeal? 
For example, are new residents and young people joining and being mentored into leadership positions? What are the succession planning of these groups? Finally, looking toward the town's future, we see a need to update our communication and organization technologies. We need to increase our outreach to engage and support participation in town government and in volunteering. The vitality of the town depends on engaging the participation of newcomers as well as long-term residents and young adults as well as more seasoned adults. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Greeley? Yeah, thank you very much. That was very well done. Um, the most viewed program is the Board of Selectmen's <coughs> meetings. Um, yes. Any, any reason why you think that people flock to cable to watch us on Monday nights or on reruns? We, we didn't ask um, ab about that. I see. Who I, wants to know who is their favorite celebrity? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, do I have a point in time? Uh, did you ask who their favorite celebrity is? <laughs> we'll Thank do that nice. next time. <laughs> very well done. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Diane? Um, I believe, Mary, you might have been at our precinct, uh, town meeting member precinct meeting. And yes, I, think I was. And you spoke at it. Right. Um, and, and that was very helpful. So kind of piggybacking on that, um, for years, I want to say either seven or 11 years, and I'm going to get in trouble by saying names, but I knew Bill Berkowitz from precinct 8 and 10, and they have always had about yeah. a month before town meeting, a meeting at the senior center, which is in the area of precinct 8 and 10, um, to have neighbors and the like come in. And I'm pretty sure this was their seventh year. Um, and I was contacted. I've, I've always wanted to do it, but being a selectman, I didn't want people to say, you know, how come she's doing it? Mm -hmm. But then I was contacted by other town meeting members in precincts 12 and my precinct 14, as well as four. And we had those groups. And um, I think you were kind enough to send a very nice email. You attended and you spoke. And you said right. this was sort of the thing I think you might be talking about in your survey as one of the steps we could initiate. I think that would be very helpful. I think it was very helpful for the, the precinct um, 12 and 14 to meet that particular time. I'm not sure how often or whether that had happened previously, but the sense I had was that people who had just come in as new town meeting members were meeting each other. They were meeting older long-term town meeting members, and they were meeting those of us who were their constituents. Um, and I think that it felt like a really exciting time. Um, and, and I, I well, would. My goal this year is to work with the town manager's office and with Vision 2020, because I, in the process of getting everything together of how you can get people and who you should contact and who you're, you know, you can't have the principal of the school send the notice out, but you can have the PT oh newsletter send it out and who those people are I'm coming up with sort of a little packet and also with the town moderator sort of putting that together and then whoever whatever vision 2020 suggests or the town moderator i don't know how much i can be involved as a selectman saying if you want to pick up the packet at the selectman's office but maybe on the town moderator list send it to all the town meeting members saying if you want to hold a meeting like precinct 4 8 10 12 14 get a little you know, my competitive juices in there, there is information available. So we can say, this is your school, this is your PTO president, here's the news media you should contact, here's the online media you should contact, here's what steps. And then also, um, we had this um, with Precinct 4, they wanted to meet in Hardy School, so they had to sort of pass the hat for the custodian. And that's something, you know, I was, and I said, you know, how about the Fox Library? And they said, well, no, that would be Precinct 1, 3, and 5. They wanted to do it since Precinct 4. So th those are the sort of things. So what I'll do is I'll make sure whatever I come up with that I get it to the, the three different bodies and then let somebody tell me what is the appropriate way. I mean, I'd be happy to have it in the selectman's office, but I don't want to, you know, when we are elected. I want to get it out in the most neutral um, venue that I can, so whether it's through 2020 and or the town moderator. Um, and I'll be sure to include everybody on the emails in case I've missed anything or any suggestions on that. And I think if we could start that at least once a year, I'd love all 21 precincts to do it, um, then that might start to foster an environment that maybe they do it twice a year. 
Uh, maybe they have it set up so that when there is an important neighborhood issue, they can, you know, call those forces together and get, get that kind of meeting organized. But definitely, I think, at least once a year is very helpful. That, that would be wonderful, and if I may, I'd like to add that our standing committee, after a discussion, I think, a week ago, would love to have you have a, a little insert that would be the town goals, <coughs> so that people would have a chance to be exposed to those goals. Joe? Yes, th thank you very much, and thank you for the report. It was uh, wonderful. Yeah, Ms. Mahan is right. I mean, I, I went to, I think, all three of those precinct meetings, and there must have been 125 people at least who participated. So that covered about, about almost a quarter of the precincts, and it, it was good as a warrant, <coughs> warrant review. Um, so it would be great to see that expanded. Um, there's definitely a thirst out there uh, to, to get involved in the community. And you know, one thing, I, I think a number of us who've participated in the master planning process, we've seen at some of these the forums. We saw it just at the, the forum last week. Um, there were a number of people who showed up who said, you know, I just moved to town the last couple of years. I've been busy with work. I'm really interested in getting involved. I don't really know how. I thought I'd come down and, and participate in this and thought maybe this would be a way to do it, to attend the forum. But there did seem to be kind of a pent up uh, interest in that. I don't know if you talked about, th there's one other idea that um, was tried a little bit l last year. There were, were a group of our um, faith communities in town had organized a talk by Jim Wallace down in the, the town hall auditorium. One thing they did in conjunction with that is they had reached out to some of the nonprofit and civic groups like the Boys and Girls Club and some of the other groups to have a small volunteer fair in the back. And it struck me that if there is this pent up demand that, that kind of a dedicated volunteer fair that's really specifically um, focused on <laughs> inviting organizations in one morning for two hours, set up the tables and, and, and just explain what they have and what people can get involved with, that might actually satisfy some of that pent up demand of some of these <coughs> folks who are coming to a forum they happen to read about that's a maybe a one time hit or a, you know once every six months uh, <coughs> type of hit. And I don't know if that's something that the Vision 2020 has thought about, but if it's something that they might be interested in working on, I'd, I'd certainly be willing to, to work. I think it's a very good idea. <clears throat> uh, last year, the Cambridge Savings Bank had a uh, volunteer fair, but it was it was done, I believe, in conjunction with the um, the um, business community, mm -hmm. and um, so there, I had gone because I wanted to see who was there. There were not; it was mostly business community people. And I think that having something larger, which is for the whole community to uh, attend, would be a very good idea. And I will just say just one last thing. I, one of my former lives, I worked as a job counselor um, for uh, refugees. And a lot of times, the, the way that people got their, their foot in the door in the employment market, a lot of times, was to find rewarding, productive, active volunteer opportunities. So I think putting that out there can also have some long run ancillary benefits also for, for the participants. So thank you for your work on this. I appreciate it. Steve? Uh, yeah, just two quick things. Uh, thank you very much for uh, all your work on this. And talking about getting um, you know new residents involved, I started thinking about um, our regionalization forum that we had. And when Lexington talked about their program that kind of walks um, you know, new residents through our, you know, how town government works. Yeah. And I think that's certainly something that we, uh, you know, we haven't talked about in a little while, but certainly something we could walk into and it might make, um, you know, lower the intim intimidation level of, you know, walking through town meeting or maybe getting involved uh, down that route. And uh, talking, and one quick other thing, talking about the viewership of the Board of Selectmen. I'm pretty sure viewership has skyrocketed since Joe's and mine election. <laughs> so I'd, um, I think we all know where that came from. <laughs> I'd like a report on that. They're waiting please. us for us to fall on our faces. That's what it is. <laughs> like a tracking of the last 10 years of the chairman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I enjoyed reading it as well. I, I, I took some time over at this weekend, and I'd also taken apart some of the uh, detailed 
uh, cross tabs that were available uh, online with the Excel doc that people put out. And um, I think one of my deep insights was that town meeting needs fried dough. Because that's the way that we can get, start getting the attendance like town day. <laughs> I wonder where you're going there. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. thank you. Do I have a motion for a receipt? Move receipt. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Approved. Next up, approval. Uh, request our, uh, for the First Lights events. Jennifer Tripp and Charles Pappas of the Chamber of Commerce. Welcome. Thank you. Um, Jen Tripp, Executive Director for the Arlington Chamber of Commerce, and Chuck Pappas from Arlington Scripty Printing from Arlington Nice. So I'm here to ask um, for permission to put some lawn <coughs> signs at the gateway entrances to Arlington for the first lights. So this is our logo. And it basically would have just the date and the QR code. Very simple. You put them in and take them out as soon as the event's over. Okay. And uh, let's do them both together. Keep going. Do want to, well, Chuck uh, is going to talk about the park. Oh, you want to? Okay. <laughs> All right. Move, move approval. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. The other thing that we wanted to bring up is um, up in the Heights in one of the areas, uh, the Brigham side block from that to the cleaners. It's a very narrow sidewalk. As a contingency plan, we thought we'd be pre uh, proactive and ask you if, uh, for permission to block off the parking during the event if so we need it. Um, we'd like to do it in the sense of we'd give the police 48 hour notice. Things are still shaping up so we're not 100 percent sure right now. Uh, we have another meeting coming up but with the holidays coming up and Thanksgiving we want to make sure we've got that on the agenda now. Uh, just some of our concern is just um, not that we're blocking off the parking but rather we're making the sidewalk wider. Uh, some of the other events we've had, that area, people had to walk out in the street. So we thought um, we'd get permission first, and then if uh, the events so need it, um, we'd then let the police know and, and just cone off a section there. Diane? You may have said this, and I apologize, but do you have a night selected for first night? Oh, first night is Saturday, December 7th. It's noon to 5. Noon to five. Has oh. the trolley going up and down the okay. avenue. And no, I just... For some reason, it was in my head. Thank you. Yeah. Steve? Um, I'm thinking about the restricting parking and having, you know, basically using the parking spots as a sidewalk. Um, are you considering having a police detail for throughout this? Um, I, I, I'd feel a little bit better. I'm not, you know, if we're going to be, there's not really a set, you know, curb, say, where people, they, I could see people just wandering out into the street with just having you know the spots blocked off and I think that um, potentially having a police detail would be a, a good step to ensuring the safety of uh, the onlookers first I, I was thinking I, I had I thought when I first read the request I thought it was just uh, closing off the parking just to permit like traffic flow and stuff like that I didn't understand until you spoke now that it was about uh, pedestrians I share your concern and I would consider I, I guess I would support a motion that said um, the contingent upon police approval. So if the police look at it and they decide that they want a detail or, or not, but I, I, I share your concerns about just about, you know, people on the street. Mm -hmm. Joe? And I think we do this for Feast of the East, yep. right? Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure what we do about we the de set up detail. The, the, there is, for Feast of the East, they have two, but it's also a larger event. Yeah, yeah, but they definitely events. have one at Lake, which is similar to <coughs> Lake Street. And then DPW sets up the horses, and then it's roped off. And then they have the other one at wherever the other end ends. So that's where, the, which is usually by Arlington Vision Care. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I don't know if they'd need to here, but I agree with um, what was stated that you know, subject to <coughs> conditions and approval by the um, police and fire chief. So. Yeah. So I mean, you intend on marking it somehow, Chuck? Right? That. It's not just going to be open to Mass Ave like you would. You're playing on horses or the yellow tape, or something. right? With yeah. with cones or something, so it would be obvious on that, which is why we would need the police help on that or the yeah. the town help yeah. on that. So I second the motion, subject to police approval. We didn't actually have a motion yet that I heard. <laughs> oh, did, did you? No. Okay. Um, Do you want okay. Well, I move approval, subject <laughs> to police approval. All right. Police and fire. Police and fire. Sorry. Here. 
Second. Thank you. Larry, we have a motion to second. Does that sound reasonable? That's, that's fine. Okay. Further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Um, Mr. Pappas, I've got your email about the 15 minute parking uh, on Mass Ave, and I'm going to put that on the agenda for, it was too late for to put to talk about yeah, for this one. So that. I'll put it on for the first meeting in December. Uh, I guess I can't be that 75% that never attended a government meeting. Then. <laughs> no, you already, you already blew that record. <laughs> but I'm sure Jen increased the ratings for today. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. Thank, thank you. Thank you both. Next up, the moment we've all been waiting for. Approval, opening of the warrant of 2014. I noticed that on, on our desk we have a request that actually it's a revised date, so I'm just going to read it. Uh, the second will vote to open the warrant of the town meeting. Will take town meeting will take place on Monday, April 28th, at 8 p.m. The warrant will open Tuesday, December 3rd, at 8 a.m. and remain open until noon on Friday, January 13th, 2014. Excuse me. Yes. Isn't that what I just said? January 30. Did I? You said uh, January 31. Oh, okay. 3 1, 2014. I apologize. So moved. Second. second. All right. We have a motion to second. I will comment uh, that I'd like every chair before me, I will pro I'm going to try to get the Slackman's report done and like in time with like a you know a minimum of fuss and, and uh, as much preparation as possible. And um, I'm sure like every chairman before me, I will find it a very difficult task. Uh, but one of the things that I just really want to be clear about is that uh, even, we're going to, just because town meeting is in April, doesn't mean you get your hearing in March. We will be doing hearings in January. We will be doing hearings in February. We will be doing hearings in March. And uh, when your time comes up, you have to be ready because we can't do everybody in March. Just can't do it. There's, you know, 50 plus articles, and we can't do them in uh, for just four meetings. Anything else? <laughs> All right. I feel like I should take out the gavel and start beating. It. <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 just. I should tell. Uh, I got a stick in here. I should tell um, our new town council, but he better get typing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, no, seeing no further discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Okay, item number nine, special town meeting. Mr. Chaplain? Uh, simply, I, I want to tell the board there, there is, today uh, we know there's a need for a special town meeting to, uh, for a town meeting to ratify uh, the police officer's contract for FY14 and 15. Uh, we're currently aware of a small adjustment to be made to an FY14 budget for one of the enterprise funds and the potential for a funding of one of the capital projects for the FY15 plan in a special town meeting to have access to the funds early. There could be something else that comes up between now and then, but today that's what we know as reasons for a special town meeting. Move approval. Um, for a special town meeting, opening the warrant for Wednesday, April 30th, 2014 at 8 p.m., opening it on Tuesday, February 4th, 2014 at 8 a.m., and it will remain open until Tuesday, February 4th, 2014 until 4 p.m. Is that the? That was that was what I. Thank you. Yeah. Second. Yeah. You read my mind. <laughs> so just the leak, just on the legalese yeah, for this. That's yeah. Right. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, though I confess I hadn't really thought about that. Um, why are we opening and closing it so early? That's Wouldn't what we, we do. We? Yeah. It used to just so. be for an hour or two, but now we we change that to a whole. Now day. I guess I'm I'm thinking about like for, why not do it say uh, March 15th. Is what I was thinking. I'm just, I, I can, this is one of those things you're supposed to think about when you read your packet over have, the weekend. Why not have and a then, special yeah. town meeting March 15th? Because we want to have it within, so that we're not adding an extra night of town hall, an extra night of custodians. What we're doing is we're opening I'm regular sorry, I'm not town being, meeting on Monday yep. and then having it on Wednesday. Or are you saying you I'm want not, a different day for the 8 to 5? I'm saying a different day for the 8 to 5. Because what I'm suggesting is, is that um, one of the things that we use the special town meeting for is exactly as Adam described, having a um, like a trying to do construction, you know, for instance, something like that. And on February fourth, we may not know what items we were are going to be ready to go, but we will have a much more evolved budget process by the time we get to late March. And so, uh, so I, I'm de I completely understand why we want to do the special on that day. I was just thinking. Uh, maybe there's a really good reason why we don't. So well, correct me if I'm wrong. I think this is basically we work, kind of work backwards in terms of everything that has to be done and mailed out. Who picked this date? Is this? 
that definitely affects it. Um, yeah. But up to this point in time, and I'm sure Adam could answer it, the special town meeting historically has only been open really for a one day period. We have the larger period for annual town meeting, which more non-critical things could go into. Yeah. But I think the answer to the question is if, if we said, okay, we're not going to open the warrant one day in February, we're going to do it one day in March, I don't think we'd be able to have it the second night of town meeting because there's all these things that have to happen. Yes. You know what I'm uh, saying? Because you need 60 days. I have to back in those numbers. Right. Because you need the 60 days so we'll warning. To the Got end. it. I forgot about that. Okay. okay. Yes. I move to table this. Let us explore this yeah. more. There's, there's, there's no harm in bringing it back in the next yeah. meeting. I apologize for not bringing that up earlier. It's one of those, it just occurred to me now. I should have come up with that earlier. Yeah, so I'll withdraw my motion and okay. I'll second Mr. Green. Oh, sorry, Joe. Yeah, yeah no, I, I think it's appropriate. Yeah, I apologize it appropriate. for not coming up we'll earlier. Table. It is appropriate. All those in favor of tabling, please say aye. 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 Table. All right, next up, discussion, future board meetings. Well, Mr. Chair, should we take up item 11? I don't know whether some people are here. Oh, for that. I think you're absolutely. And then we can do the work session. Thank you for the day. suggestion. We have a request for a proclamation uh, for the Pancreatic Cancer uh, Network. Uh, it's from Marlene Rockmore, who's been before us before, and we have an audience filled with people dressed in purple uh, who are here to support uh, the, the motion. Uh, we have had a number of community members who we've lost to pancreatic cancer, both recently and over our history, and I think it's brought um, pancreatic cancer to the front of a lot of people's head, brains here in town. And um, thank you for coming here to support uh, the, the, the proclamation. Whereas November is Pancreatic Awareness Month in the town of, Arling, in the town of Arlington, and an estimated 45,220 people in 2013 will be diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in the United States, and 38,460 will die from the disease. And whereas pancreatic cancer is one of the deadliest cancers, is the fourth leading cause of cancer death in the United States, and is the only major cancer with a five-year relative survival rate in the single digits at just 6%. And whereas when symptoms of pancreatic cancer present themselves, it is late stage, and 73% of pancreatic cancer patients die within the first year of their diagnosis, while 94% of pancreatic cancer patients die within the first five years. And whereas approximately 910 deaths will occur in Massachusetts in 2013. And whereas the incidence and death rate for pancreatic cancer are increasing and pancreatic cancer is anticipated to move from fourth to the second leading cause of cancer death in the U.S. by 2020. And whereas the U.S. Congress passed the Recalcitrant Cancer Research Act last year, which calls on the National Cancer Institute to develop a scientific framework or strategic plan for pancreatic cancer and other deadly cancers, which will help provide the strategic direction and guidance needed to make true progress against these diseases. And whereas, it will be very difficult to leverage the opportunities to come out of the scientific framework developed as a result of the Recalcitrant Cancer Research Act unless sustained and adequate funding is provided to the National Institutes of Health and National Cancer Institute. And whereas federal funding for medical research is critical to job protection and creation in Massachusetts. And whereas the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network is the national organization serving the pancreatic cancer community in Arlington and nationwide through a comprehensive approach that includes public policy, research funding, patient services, and public awareness and education related to developing effective treatments and a cure for pancreatic cancer. And whereas the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network and its affiliates in Arlington support those patients currently back battling can pancreatic cancer, as well as to those who have lost their lives to the disease and are committed to nothing less than a cure. And whereas the good health and well-being of the residents of Arlington are enhanced as a direct result of increased awareness about pancreatic cancer and research into early detection, causes, and effect effective treatments. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the members of the Board of Selectmen, designate the month of November 2013 as Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month in Arlington. And it's signed by us all. Is there a motion? That's so moved. Second. Further discussion? I don't know if anybody can. Do any of them want to speak? So, I would just note, I want to first thank you all for your dedication to this and, and keeping the memories alive of uh, so many you know, valued community members and people who have served our community um, through this. I, I would just note that to put the scope of this in perspective, the, the numbers of people afflicted in the, um, the country, 
that number is scarily close to the entire population of our town, just to put it in perspective. Um, so thank you very much for bringing this uh, forward. And, uh, and uh, Did one of you want to jo uh, come up and have a comment? Marlena, can I invite you up to the mic? Marlene Rockmore, 18 Perkins Street, Arlington. I've also been a town meeting member for Precinct 12 for nine years. Um, and um, I do want to, we want to introduce two people. But I know today's been a very difficult day in Arlington. So um, we are really grateful that you've taken a few moments to discuss this issue. Um, and you remember Judy Pearson last year saying we want to turn um, October pink, we want to turn November uh, purple. Um, um, it's the fourth leading cause of deaths, and since we were here last year, we lost Terry Spouse Judy, and we lost Nancy Galkowski. So this is personal for all of us. I do have some good news, and that's that because of your awareness work and our advocacy, the Recalcitrin Cancer Research Act was passed. 193 bills were passed out of 10,000 presented before Congress. This is one of the bills that passed, 0.002% rate. And this wouldn't happen without this kind of support of local communities. Um, so I would like to introduce Deborah Butler and Terry, who will say some br brief words. Okay, thank you. Welcome back, both of you. Thank you. Um, Deborah Sorotkin Butler, 19 Overlook Road, also a town meeting member. After my husband died, I ran for his seat because he couldn't do what he used to do. And I have another piece of good news. For the first time, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts has issued a pancreatic cancer awareness proclamation. Um, this was done in formal session of the state senate. It's been signed by the governor. Um, Ken Donnelly gave a very moving tribute um, to, to Mark, um, who asked that all of us do what we could so that no one, someday no one would suffer as, as he had suffered. And so I wanted to, to bring this down to show you all that Arlington is not alone in, in taking this action, but that the only way to end the scourge of a disease like this is to pay serious attention to it and have it receive the research funds commensurate with the number of people affected. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, first, thank you so much for declaring November 2013 Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month in the town of Arlington. Um, the Pancreatic Cancer Action Networks, their motto is know it, fight it, and end it. And it's nights like tonight in proclamations across this state and across the country that really help, uh, help our community members know about pancreatic cancer. You mentioned some of the statistics where, which are pretty horrific. Um, just one short year ago, my wife Judy stood here personally to thank you. And it was so important to her to come that night that I drove her straight from a pretty difficult chemotherapy session to here because she wanted to talk to you. So um, you know, that's how important it is to those people going through this. As you know, um, sadly, she passed away in January at the age of 49. Her courageous fight with pancreatic cancer ended in January, but mine has not, nor has that of tens of thousands of volunteers and survivors across the country, including um, my purple crew here, um, <laughs> that we are committed to fighting this, know, knowing it, fighting it, and ending pancreatic cancer. As you mentioned in the proclamation, ca pancreatic cancer has a 5% survival rate, I mean a 6% survival rate for five years. It hasn't budged in 30 years. And that's pretty telling that we need some more effort behind it. Um, I know we can do better, and it starts with nights like tonight and proclamations like like the city, the town of Arlington has made. We need to marshal all our forces to fight this disease and to meet the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network's goal of doubling the survival rate by 2020. We are making progress, as you've heard, um, but we need, we need more help. Um, 
I would encourage anyone here or anyone watching this on television, if they're interested in learning more or volunteering, we have a Boston affiliate meeting coming up on January 18th at 2 p.m. It's a Saturday at the Cary Library in Lexington. Anybody who's interested in coming for support, coming for more information, or volunteering for this cause. One last request, this Friday is um, Purple with a Purpose Day. So we encourage anybody to wear purple on Friday and tell anyone who will listen why you're wearing purple. And mention a couple of the statistics, the 6% the survival rate, the fourth leading cause of death, soon to be, if we don't make some progress, the second leading cause of cancer death in the country. You know in Boston and the Massachusetts we're blessed with great doctors and really great medical facilities. The doctors on Judy's case did everything they could to help her survive and they simply ran out of options. So the, the, we stand here with determination and hope that we can raise awareness, we can fight this disease and end this disease and give the doctors more uh, treatment options and early detection to end pancreatic cancer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Diane. I just want to say um, I can't think of, unfortunately now, anyone who hasn't been touched with pancreatic disease, doesn't know somebody. Um, Similar to, I want to commend you all what you're doing, and I'm, my remarks aren't necessarily for you all, but for people watching at home, because similar to autism, 40 years ago, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, it wasn't until the past 15 years when advocates like this went to town government, went to city council, went to boards of selectmen, got proclamations, then contacted their reps and their senators and said, are you aware that in your district, Arlington voted this, you know, Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month. Autism has Autism Speaks. Pancreatic Cancer has the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. Then from going from the state, then you went down to Washington, D.C., because it was really, and it still is really scary to me, 25 years into different journeys, including autism, that I'm like, how come, you know, things are just starting to happen, and that took 15, 20 years. So this really is a very important step, besides just educating everybody. Um, and, you know, and, and people say, you know, what's the color significance? That's a perfect thing. That's a vehicle to say, let me tell you about my story. Let me tell you about my journey. Because until we start doing things like this, because it, it always blew my mind that my Uncle Joe, 40 years, got pancreatic cancer. He passed within six months. Good friend Brenda Burns Tachi, who I'm like, she's going to beat this no matter what, got it in April, about thir 15, 16 years ago, in her early 30s, passed in August and she was a fighter and knowing people in the past 10 years I've been frustrated saying how come it seems like we were stagnant with pancreatic cancer because I don't see, you know I don't see the survival rates going out like I do on other you know breast cancer and and liver and lung which I'm thrilled with that um, and the way to get that NIH um, attention is through efforts like this and it really does help so it's not just about reading a whereas and wearing a color there's a um, method to all of that and it really really does work it does take a long time but I've seen especially with autism once you get that dedicated core group in your state and now you have a national organization that not that they weren't around for many many years but now people know of them just like with autism speak th this is exactly what needs to happen because I share in your frustration that you know having dealt with had family members and close friends for the past 40 years I've kind of been a little ticked off that <laughs> I don't really see much, and I want to see more, and I want more opportunities. Which, so I commend you all. I know, I know the journey you're walking down. Um, I know, unfortunately, what brings you there, but it, that's also the same inspiration that's keeping you on this and making this happen, and I really do admire all the work and effort. So thank you so much. Ready for a vote? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. All right, we're returning back to our schedule. <coughs> Opening up my calendar. So while we're doing that, Mr. Chairman, yeah, uh, our next, our second meeting in December. I'm wondering to what degree plans have or haven't uh, advanced related to the typical holiday. I think we are, I, I have recommended to Marie that she start work on a, uh, 
local establishment so that we can visit after our, after our meeting, which most notably is our new attorney's first day. Wow. <laughs> Comes in and gets a party? That's what I'm saying. Well, <laughs> Not a bad gig. <laughs> I wonder, uh, would this board entertain considering a change of that date? And the reason I ask is oh, 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 oh. I have to be in San Francisco on business. Um, and I really don't want, I don't like missing parties, as you know. But mm -hmm. it, that's why I wondered how far advanced they are. Not very. And would the board either entertain, we do a beginning of the year, like on January 6th, uh, or not? I mean, really, uh, if the, you can go ahead, you know, it's, uh, but uh, I just, you know, I have a piece of business and they want to pay me money, so <laughs> I want to go. And I need to be there by Tuesday morning, so I have to go out on Monday. Yeah. I, per I personally have absolutely no objection to doing it because, you know, I find yeah, the month of December to be fairly it. hectic, and so moving yeah. something to January is fine by me. Would the January 6th matter to anybody? Would it be uh, any issue? No. Oh. It's a big problem. It, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Oh, he can't do it. So what? <laughs> no. Our new town council is going to have a much more difficult first day. In yeah, it, yes. <laughs> the only thing is, should, if we move it, yeah. it's come January, we're kind of starting beginning of year, and yep. not necessarily Warren articles, because um, it won't be closed yet. Why don't you and Mr. Grayley just coordinate that and see if it needs to be a different night that we okay. can again have a short, like have the Monday night, June 6th meeting, but maybe have a short I mean, January 6th, have a short January 8th meeting if there's one or two pieces of business mm -hmm. and then go somewhere. Well, well, I mean, if we. Well, why not Monday night the 6th? What's wrong with that? I'm just concerned if we have a really full agenda. Traditionally, for the December one, we can only we only put two or three items on. We do. In, in our January meetings, typically, there's more than that. You know right. what I'm saying? So why not do it? But we'd reverse that as well. I mean, well, it's up to you all. You have mm -hmm. to be here, but I can't be. Mm -hmm. But what I'm doing is do more on that December meeting, me treat it more like a regular meeting. Yeah. And the January, we'll, we'll just do a couple of items. Uh, so we've got, the, yeah. <coughs> no, we have time to know what is, what's, as we get closer to January, I'm di I just know there's some items, and tell me if I'm wrong, Mrs. Sullivan, that are going to come up in January that we can't address in December. And we'll have a pretty decent agenda. What I'm saying is if it seems the January 6th agenda is really growing, 14, 15, 16, um, maybe we could entertain at the end of December saying that we will also have a meeting on Wednesday, I'm just saying for instance, Wednesday, January 8th, and there may be one or two things that need to be done, and then we recess. So what, as we get closer to January 6th, um, can leave it to the chairman and Mr. Grilly. Well, I mean, we can go to the Monday. I don't know. Let's, let, let's short. Let's talk, so, let's talk about what the January yeah. schedule is going to be. Okay. Let's, uh, let's, yeah. First off, so our last meeting of the year is December 16th, uh, unless we just need one or want to do one, say on the 30th. If, if we, you know, if the need arises. Um, we may put one in there, depending upon what the agenda looks like. Does anyone at this time feel like we should schedule one for the 30th? Not right now. For December 30th? December 30th. Unless you wanted to do that for well, dinner that night. Yeah. Why don't we take that? That's Joe just grimaced. Oh. No, no. no. Okay. <laughs> so why don't we schedule a short one for December 30th? We'll schedule one for December 30th. Does that work? Everyone's because you anticipate, the, because you think that that would be the time for the short one, or do you because you think the short one? Does that work for you, Mr. Green? Yeah, that's fine with me. The thirtieth. Yeah, it's all it's all the same to me. So, um, no, so okay. you, you, yeah, that works for me. All right. Okay. So thank we're going to cancel team. the. Uh, we'll do the. We'll still do a meeting on the sixteenth. Okay. But it'll but be we'll a regular system. meeting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now we've done December thirtieth. Uh, the 20th is Martin Luther King Day. Do we want to do 13th, 27th? Um, do you think, uh, Mrs. Sullivan, we might, well, no, if we have one on the 30th, then we will be chill. Okay, 13th and 27th? Is that what you said? Sorry. Yep. Okay. I was just checking my schedule to make sure I, I'd said it with, I said it without looking at what I had first. All right. February the 17th is a holiday, so I guess that works reasonably well with the 10th and the 24th. Okay. <coughs> no worries. What's the 
was that? No. Um, 10th and 24th? Yeah. Then we're getting to March, and frankly, I just anticipate that we're going to need, you know, more than two probably in March. Want to tentatively do 310-24 or 310-31? I mean, mm -hmm. you could meet on 17, but... So no, yeah, I'm, not, I'm, I'm just not excluding 17 either. So. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just thinking about what makes sense because we're probably going to want to go to print. <laughs> What's so funny, Marianne? Did you say March 17th? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Do you have something planned? I might. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think 310 tw uh, 24. That works. Makes oh, okay. sense. Okay, for now. Yeah. And then definitely we want to set one for April 7. So I guess that makes sense mm -hmm. for what we want to do. And then we have the quick one on the 28th. We meet at like 7 or 7.15, then go down to town meeting. Uh, yes. Yeah, so do you think the set we can, do you honestly think we're going to be able to get away with only having the 7th and the 28th in April, though? No. Oh. no. Yeah. <laughs> Not with hearings. No. Yeah. Uh, so, so the 21st is ho um, a holiday, so I think that really means the 14th. Mm -hmm. Anybody have anything else they want to talk about or put on the talking about the calendar? <coughs> okay. No, but again, so what did we say? The 7th or 14th? And then, uh, the hour before. Uh, before April? Yeah, 7, 14, and the 28th. And we're into the hour before. Yeah. And somebody here is going to have to give the state of the town. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, won't be me either. Uh, okay, I think we should move on to new business. Oh no, what am I doing? Correspond. Correspondence received. We have a re uh, letter from Mr. Dosha, who is also with us. Uh, I guess my first reaction upon reading this was to refer to the um, town manager and the tree committee. So and invite them. Motion and a second. second. Mr. Dosha, do you want to weigh in for a minute or? Uh, if there are any questions. Um... It was a reasonably well written letter. I understood every word. The color photo, okay, yes. I, I want to make sure. Uh, Bob Radosha, um, I'm a town meeting member, so you get an idea. <laughs> <you're up> against. <laughs> he yeah. signed my petition when I first ran, too. Okay. Uh, briefly, uh, just for the benefit of those at home, what it was about was, you know, Arlington takes a lot of pride in the abundance of trees and being noted for uh, walk, uh, a walk, as a walkable community. And however, when you start to walk, you have difficulty. Um, you encounter broken sidewalks, and uh, sidewalks are uprooted by basically uh, trees. And it, it's difficult for a lot of the seniors getting around town, people with carriages and strollers. Um, I'm, I've noted on Oak Hill Drive, women walking in the street with carriages because they just can't get through there. So it's kind of typical. And it's about planting them in narrow strips. All right. Most municipalities across the country require a minimum of four feet. And we don't have much of that except on the main roads, Mass Ave and some other places, you'll find that. So, yeah, I'm basically asking to look into a way of avoiding it, planting them in the narrow strips. And to my mind, when you do that to a tree, uh, there are people out there who uh, consider it as uh, tree abuse, you know, because you're not really giving the root a chance to go anywhere except squeeze it and push out a sidewalk or a curb. And uh, another downside to it is, and I think a couple of the photos indicate that, the, um, they act as a visual barrier in many ways for people exiting their driveways and so forth. You look down the street and it's just a row of trees, you can't see people coming. And the reverse for pedestrians, the motorists can't necessarily always see people leaving their property and so forth. So um, 
you know, there's a lot of cost involved in repairing them all the time, and I'd like to see uh, some way of avoiding it. And perhaps um, when somebody requests a tree, which is most, uh, you know, often that's why they're planted, uh, the town accommodates them. But if it's a narrow strip, perhaps there's a way we can find somehow, some way of planting them on their property without town legal problems with the town or whatever, maybe give them the tree and say, it's yours, you own it, now you have your tree. Um, so that, that's what that's about, and I'd like to s at least uh, consider it a little bit of take another look into it. So, thank I can you. tell you the tree committee is very active, and they will be delighted to take a look at it. Yeah, okay. And were you referring to the tree committee? I think we're going to do the tree committee I, and the manager. Yeah, I was going to say, on, the, on that um, paragraph three, on the legality of that, A, you know, what the function would be, and B, what they would place on the town. Yeah. Just from the court reporter side, just that side of it, I'm thinking of all the legal, legalese stuff, if that's possible, how that's possible. Yeah, I, if, I, if I may, I'll say, I, I think this is a very good idea. In fact, Mike Rademacher and I probably talk about you know, this issue that you brought up and the possibility of planting it you know, on, within the property line you know, once or a month or every other month. The, but the truth is it is very legally complex right. and logistically complex. Uh, sometimes you're moving a root problem from a sidewalk you know, potentially into someone's foundation or sewer pipe or water main. So I'm not dismissing it. Right. No, but I think we just look at the legal side of it because yeah. I'm thinking the same thing, all the same, what you just said. But in certain neighborhoods, it could be a very workable solution mm -hmm. to recurring root yeah. sidewalk issues. Yeah, no, I, I did note when I was researching this thing that that issue has come up in other places across the country yeah. and they talked about ways of getting around it I and think it, so yeah. forth. I think but it's anyhow, manageable. it's something. Yeah. Yeah. Not okay, we have a motion. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank Five you. zero. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. That clicking noise you just heard was everyone turning the game on. <laughs> this party started. Mary, no, no, I think you get a couple minutes. Marianne. Uh, new business. The um, the packet for the Warren articles will be on the web tomorrow or the next day. We've already um, talked to Joan about it. Excellent. There's time for people. Thank you. Anything else? Esteemed Acting Town Council. Yes, sir. Do you have any new business for us? I do not. Right All now. right. Thank you, though. you don't? No, I don't. <laughs> Town Manager. Uh, uh, a few items, but I'll, I'll try to be brief. Um, the Route 128 Business Council, that was before the board sometime uh, in the past year, uh, that we subscribed to. They're the Transportation Management Agency uh, that we brought in primarily to help us look at how we can get people into Arlington, out of Arlington, around Arlington better. Uh, they met with myself, Carol Kowalski, and Laura Wiener last week uh, with an interim update. Uh, they've collected some great data and uh, started to, uh, wanted to show us where they were and start talking to us about some ideas they have in regards to uh, cooperative, um, cooperative forms of transportation, uh, some hubway bike sharing alternatives that we could consider that have a uh, much lower upfront cost. So I don't have a lot to share with you, but wanted to let you know that they have been working on our behalf and hopefully sometime in the next month, maybe, uh, maybe more like the second meeting in January, I'd hope to have them before you to talk about some of their concepts and some of the things they want to propose for the town to move forward on. Um, I wanted to mention the salary study uh, has uh, moved uh, substantially forward and uh, in two sessions, one later this week, one in the beginning of next week, the salary study consultant will be presenting their findings to uh, both uh, town administration as well as uh, union members. I know Mr. Kira is representing the board as well as uh, Ms. Ampey, uh, Ms. Allison Ampey from the school committee representing the school committee will be there. Uh, so once that presentation is made to the salary study working group, um, what's going to be presented to them will be what we'll call a final draft, so changes could still be made. Input will be taken, uh, any last changes will be made, and then we'll be able to make that a more widely uh, or a public rollout of the document, which obviously we'll share with the board. Uh, there's an incredible amount of data that's been collected, uh, so both um, myself, uh, my team here, as well as the unions will have a lot of data to parse through, uh, but I think we've built a pretty good base to inform uh, decisions we make going forward, so I'm pretty excited about that. Good. Um, 
quick save the date, the parking study committee, the group that um, has been formed to uh, implement the parking study with a parking consultant for Arlington Center, it's going to have a public meeting uh, to allow citizens to come in and give feedback about parking issues, see some uh, plan concepts and designs and interact with both the parking study committee as well as the parking consultant. And that's going to be on January 9th from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. location still to be determined. So I'll more formally let the board and the public know about that, but wanted to put that out there on the radar uh, tonight. And I believe that's uh, all I have for new business tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin. Will we adjourn? Oh, should we? No, no new business there. <laughs> Diane. Um, two topics. The first one, I had spoken to the chair and the town manager about um, if in the next three to four, five weeks, we can sort of get the town's snow combat plan yep. um, as well as I did ask the town manager and I can't remember I you did asked to look into I have always said about you know finding a way getting one of those snow melting machines I've always been told it's not cost effective but if we could when you think it's appropriate with, with Mr. Rademacher actually go through the exercise and or I'm not sure if it's something that can get into the regional um, discussion with other cities and towns because they're faced with that um, and I'm not saying that it is cost it is not cost prohibitive but sometimes I've learned people say things and they say things and then sometimes they look into it and yeah, it was a cost prohibited 10 years ago, but it's not now. Or it's something that pays itself out in year three, four, five. So, um, but more, more timely would be sort of what our snow um, plan is going to be for the yeah. upcoming season. And then the last topic is my cheerleaders, <laughs> your cheerleaders. I can't get this off. I've been trying to scrub it. That's not from a club, it's from <laughs> cheerleading competitions. Um, my high school varsity cheerleaders, co-ed staff, uh, competed at regionals on Sunday in Lowell, uh, came in fourth, and we are awaiting a possible bid. We might obtain a bid to um, states. Only the top three teams mm -hmm. automatically go, um, and, but they have extra bids. Sometimes mm -hmm. Martha's Vineyard is a spot. And what they do, which is the fair way, is they look at all the scores so that mm -hmm. if you, you know, you're not getting someone who got a 121, and skipping over someone who got a 140, so that, and you're not setting them up to fail failure either. Um, and secondly, on Saturday down in Springfield, Mass, my, our Arlington Pop Warner A and C squad competed, and the C squad, which my daughter Rebecca and my best friend Kelly Puglisi's daughter Jackie Puglisi were the head coaches on. We took a step back, came in second, and they are going to nationals at Disney. That's which is awesome. very exciting. That has I haven't had that for about seven or eight years. Yeah. Um, because of my and my husband's schedule, I will not be going. But I am in the next six days going to be massively fundraising um, to try to defray the cheerleaders' cost. The parents know they have to come up with the airfare and the room, but to try to give them, you know, we all know how expensive it is down at Disney. So I'm doing that through Arlington Pop Warner. I'll be sending out all my begging letters and things like that. But I'm very proud of A. They did a fantastic job. So thrilled with C because literally four days before the competition, a team of nine girls, so you just had two stunts, the, one of the flyers and one of the main tumblers broke around, and the team was so despondent, but they went to the coaches and said, please coach, we can do this. Yeah. You know, believe in us because now you're down to eight girls. You, you like to have 12. And so my daughter and Jackie um, did the best they could, and really the expectations weren't that high, and they went out there just talking about rocking it, and you couldn't even tell that, that, you know, people knew it was small. And when they came in second, it was better than any first place win because everyone knows the first two teams go to Disney because we were like, you know, they, they go in 14th place and 13th place and you're like 10 and you get to five. And the worst place is third place. Mm -hmm. I call it worst place because that's, you just missed it. So when that second place came out and they said Arlington's five pounds, those girls went nuts. And these girls are like um, fifth to sixth four foot five and sixth graders so they were adorable i'm very proud of them and i'm very proud of jackie and rebecca thank you congratulations to them for sure Thanks. joe thank you i only have one item um that i'd like to request we put on the uh, perhaps put on the agenda for the next um next meeting um a number of years ago you may remember uh, there was a threatened uh, picket by a national hate group of a performance at the the uh, arlington children's theater um, it is a group that has gained notoriety picketing uh, soldiers funerals and such ar around around the, around the country um, in response to that there was um, kind of a semi-formal grouping that had come together kind of dubbed itself the response coordination team it was coordinated by the uh, 
Human Rights Commission had representation from the Human Rights Commission uh, from Vision 2020 Diversity Task Group, Chief Ryan, Joan Roman, our, our public information officer, a couple of representatives of local faith communities. Um, I served as liaison from the school committee. I, I was appointed. I think Annie LaCourt used to come informally to some of the meetings, but I don't know if the board ever had a formal liaison. And so I'd like to ask that, that we put it on the agenda to appoint a formal liaison to the response coordination team. Um, I'm willing to serve if nobody else is, you know, can fit it in their schedule or, 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 or whatnot. But I, I wanted to put it out there so that everyone could consider uh, whether or not you might have interest yourselves and if we could consider that appointment next So Joe year. mentioned this beforehand. I asked him to bring it up tonight. Um, so I'll put it on the agenda. If anyone's interested, um, let me know and so we can put it on other than that and what other than that we'll I'm, just do I'm happy with Joe but all right so I, but uh, I don't want to preclude anyone if they're interested so let's just put it on okay. the agenda then for next week just do it quick and, and or not next week next meeting and then go from there yep anything else Joe no nope. um, thank you um, one I'd like to thank uh, Bill McCarthy for all of his hard work <clears throat> excuse me in setting up last week's Veterans Day ceremony it uh, you know, I feel like it did grow from uh, years prior. It, it was a really nice tribute. Um, I'd like to thank the, you know, Legion VFW DAV for sending representatives, the police and fire for sending their honor guards and everyone for attending. Um, it was a proper tribute to our veterans. And um, that's one. And uh, second, I hope that everyone takes a minute tonight when they go home and uh, you know, as a moment of silence for the first responders, um, again, and keep them in your prayers and thoughts. They obviously saw some very horrific things today, and they're all our friends. Um, so I hope that we keep them in mind. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's an excellent sentiment. Kevin. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, but um, I just want to uh, congratulate Mr. Byrne. I think this was his first year as the keynote speaker at Veterans yeah. Day. Hmm. And here he did a spectacular yes. job. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't be there. With you. Yeah. Well, honestly, Thank yeah. you. Thank you. I really do appreciate you coming. I was, I, I, I've enjoyed that parade a lot, and I was unfortunate. I was bummed that I could go, and I thank you. For, I heard you as well. Uh, anything else? No. Okay. Uh, I just have one item, which is to talk about Minuteman High's rebuilding. We all heard at the Budget and Revenue Task Force about the changes that are necessary for the. Um, in the state law and so that are necessary in order for us to get the new regional agreement. I haven't heard any news about that, but the other half of that, of course, is actually what are they going to build if we actually get a regional agreement that we can all agree to. And I got an email with a bunch of updates this weekend that I know the office forwarded along. In particular, I called out one link, which is a proposal, which is the report to the school committee from their uh, consultant, and, uh, what do you call it? The, um, feasibility study mm -hmm. and it outlined I think five different options uh, which, which ranged uh, including two different sizes of the school and different way and I, I definitely you know it's worth a good 10 minutes at least paging through and looking at it because I think frankly I came away from looking at that saying you know if they can solve the governance issues then they really are on a path to making what appears to be to me a reasonable um, building you know they've got the right con the frame at least to make that decision. So I encourage you all to take a look at, at uh, that. Um, that was my only item. Any other? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.